Hey there, if you want to learn how to create your own custom ASP.NET Core middleware classes, then this video is right for you because we we'll learn exactly how to create custom middleware classes and of course we'll also get our hands dirty, so stay tuned. Welcome to Developer Ramp Up, a channel dedicated to anybody who wishes to become a software developer or a better software developer. As I said in the intro, in this video we'll talk once more about middleware in ASP.NET Core. And I guess you can imagine how important this topic is if you want to become an ASP.NET Core web developer. In this case we'll dive a little bit deeper and we'll see how to create our own custom middleware classes and add them to the request pipeline. If you're not familiar with middleware, then please check our two previous videos on middleware. In the first video, we'll briefly explain how middleware is supposed to work in ASP.NET Core. And in the second video, we also look a little bit deeper into how we can configure ASP.NET Core middleware and how can we add some custom codes directly when we add a middleware to our request pipeline. So this video is a natural continuation of those topics because here we will go a step further and we'll create our own custom middleware class. And to get started we have an ASP.NET Core Web API, so I chose the Web API project when I created this uh, project in Visual Studio. And this comes by default with this values API with values controllers where we can uh, see or if we hit those endpoints, we receive simply value one and value two and so on. So this is the standard or the default uh, web API uh, project template that you will get in Visual Studio. Now, in order to make this work, what we want to do is to add a custom middleware to our request pipeline that will look into, into the request and it will take the path or the host name or the URL, let's say, to which this request is directed. And what we'll do is simply we'll add a path string to the host name, which will be the route to our API controller. In order to do that, let's first edit a little bit the CSProj file of, of this project because we want to make sure that when we start this application and when we make a request, we will go as default to the host name. So I will right click this and go to uh, properties. I will do this directly via properties, not via csproj. And in debug, what we have to do is simply replace these API values and let's take for that this application URL. Let's put it here. And that's basically it control save and we save this information and now when we debug what it would happen it will open the browser and the request the initial request would be made to the host name itself so not to the controller that would be able to respond to us with value one and value two and we can see that so now we are ready to go to add our custom middleware of course since middleware is nothing else than a class in C Sharp, we'll go on and create a class, a new class. And let's click add and then class. And in this case, we just want to have a class and let's name it URL transformer middleware to make sure also from the naming that we have a middleware here and click add. So we have this brand new class here, which is a public class. This is okay for now. So that's the starting point where we can basically begin to write our custom middleware. The first thing that we will need here is of course a constructor. So we'll go with CTOR and create this constructor for our URL transformer middleware. We have to know also that a custom middleware consists of not more and not less than two main and important parts. The first one is of course the constructor where we have to pass the request delegate and then there is an invoke method that we will look at a little bit later. Let's go back to the constructor right now. 
because we know when we write a custom middleware, even if we run or we create some, some custom code when we add a middleware to the pipeline with app.use, we have to call this next delegate that makes sure that the request is passed to the next middleware in the pipeline once our logic is finished. So, of course, in our custom middleware, we need to add exactly that. And this would be a request delegate. And let's call it next. Of course, we would have to add some using statements here because they are missing. And that's done. Now we are ready. Since we want or since we need this request delegate here, we also need, of course, a private field where we would also declare it here. So private and make it request delegate and let's call it next of course if this is a field i usually like to do it with underscore and of course here i mistyped something so it is request delegate and that should be it in the constructor of course we make sure that our field is equal to next so right now we have our next delegate which is instantiated in our constructor and we can use it further in our middleware. So this is the first part of our custom middleware and this is already done. Let's move on to the second part that, or to the second very important component of an ASP.NET Core middleware. As mentioned, the second part is a method that should be public, it should return a task and by convention it should be named invoke. So let's make it public, then task and invoke. Okay. So now we have this method. Here for instance, let's have an HTTP context which is name context and return next our delegate and context. Good. What we have done so far is we've created our custom middleware. We have these two parts, as I said, the constructor in which we need this request delegate and we use a private field to, to assign the next delegate to it. And then we have this task, invoke task, where we receive an HTTP context and then we simply do a return, dot next, a return underscore next. So what our middleware will do right now is nothing more than uh, passing the request further to the next middleware in the pipeline. But, but this is really the skeleton of a custom middleware. Of course, now we can start and add here some of our own logic that we want. As said, what we want to do here is basically when a request comes in, we should check the URL and if it doesn't have any path string, so if the request is directly for the host, then what we want to do is add a path string containing API and values so that we get returned value 1 and value 2 from the values controller. And this is fairly easy, it's not very complicated, we just need an if statement and here we need to check for the context request and then path. If this path equals to slash, which would mean that uh, this has no path string at all. In that case, we just want to simply add a path string. So context dot uh, request dot path equals, and it would be slash API, sorry, slash API slash values. And we need to add the semicolon at the end, of course. That's our logic. So that's what we basically want to do here. However, not equals equals because we want to assign. And of course, this is also another typo. So this should do it. 
Now, this is the logic. This is enough for what we want to achieve with this simple middleware. The next thing that we need to talk or to think about is what should we do to register this middleware. And therefore, we'll go back to startup.cs where we normally register our middleware. And what we can do is app.useMiddleware. And we'll use this method because we have to specify the type of the middleware that we want to use here. And this would be the URL transformer middleware. And of course, we need also to add parentheses and that should do it. So now our, our middleware should be registered in the pipeline. So each request that comes in should pass also through our middleware. Let's check a little bit how things are supposed to work here. And before we debug, let's simply put a breakpoint here. We want the execution to stop and let's debug to see if our middleware really does what is supposed to do. So right now a new browser window will open. The initial request is for the host name as we see right now. And we have to wait a little bit so that everything gets configured properly the first time we run and we hit our breakpoint. So if we then step into it, we see that, okay, the request was uh, had no path, so we simply add that path and then return the next and it goes on to the next middleware in the pipeline. Let's now just hit continue because we don't uh, need to see anything what happens afterwards. But once again, we see here that our middleware did the job. So if the request comes for this local host, then we still will receive the response from our values controller, which is value one and value two. So that's great. We right now have our own middleware that we have registered and configured in the middleware pipeline using our own custom middleware class. The next thing that you might ask yourself if we go back to startup.cs is, okay, we did add our middleware, but we used this use middleware and then specified the type of middleware that we want to use. But we want to be very, very clean and we want to use something like app.useMVC or app.useHTTPS redirection. So how can we configure our middleware to be registered just like uh, all the other middleware in the pipeline are registered. So instead of app.use middleware and type, we should have something like app.use URL transformer middleware. And this is very easy to achieve using an extension method. So let's go one step further and add an extension method in a separate class. Normally, I would add this into a totally separate file. I would create a new class that would be called URL Transformal Extensions, and then uh, I would add the uh, uh, extension method. However, as this is only for demo purposes, I think we're good if we simply add here another class. So let's do that. And I prepared for this a code snippet adding this uh, class. We also have to add this using statement for the iApplication Builder and now everything should be okay. Let's explain a little bit what this extension method does. As we know, an extension method takes an existing uh, entity or an existing object and it does something to that object. And a very specific thing for extension methods is that they always use this this keyword, which means that everything we do applies to exactly this instance of the I application builder. So when we return the builder use middleware, we use this typed middleware URL transformer middleware. If you look good here, this is exactly what we have done earlier in the startup.cs because there we have used this use middleware of type URL transformer middleware. If we move everything or if we move this exact part of the code into this extension method, this would mean that we would be able in startup.cs just to simply use app.useURLTransformerMiddleware which is this name here.
The iApplication Builder in ASP.NET Core, as we know it, is just simply, simply the application builder. So the object on which we configure everything for our application, including services, middleware, and so on. Now, if we go back to startup.cs, what we can do here is simply app dot use url transformer middleware so this is a call to our extension method and of course semicolon at the end now we see that we can simply add our custom middleware to the middleware pipeline as clean as all the other middleware is added like app.use mvc and so on now if we debug, I would expect that we would receive exactly the same result that we did also earlier, only that in this case we were able to register the middleware in a much more clean way. Let's wait just a little bit to see if everything adds up and we normally should see here value 1 and value 2, which we know is the information that comes from our values controller. And that is indeed the case. So we did it. We managed to create our custom middleware class, which was this URL transformer middleware. Any middleware class, any custom middleware class that you might want to add has these two very important parts. The constructor in which we have to get the next delegate that we assigned afterwards to a private field. Of course, in order to be used in this invoke method to instruct our request to simply go to the next middleware in the pipeline. And before this call to the next field, we can add our custom logic. In our case, we added some very, very basic logic that uh, when a request comes in for the host name, we should add the path, the path string that corresponds to our values controller. Of course, in normal or let's say in, in production ready applications, we might have a little bit more sophisticated logic. We might have some other classes. We might not simply write everything here in this, uh, in this invoke method, but we could also rely on services that we can call and let some services perform a certain logic for us and so on. This type of logic that we added might not be really useful, but there are a lot of scenarios when adding custom middleware might be very useful. For instance, if you want to do something like uh, analytics tracking, then it is maybe wise that you want to catch and to log your analytics when the request or when the response is sent to the requestor. In that case, we would have to add our logic after this next delegate. And there are also a lot of other scenarios where you would like to add some custom middleware, like for instance, if you uh, have some type of endpoints that are not directly exposed uh, or the clients that might call uh, your application might, might not know about that uh, those endpoints and you can add some logic here uh, based on certain circumstances to redirect the request to a certain endpoint and so on. So really the limit of what you can do in custom middleware is uh, only your uh, creativity and your imagination and of course the requirements for the application that you might develop. In this video, we briefly took a look into how we can create our custom middleware classes and how we can register our custom middleware in the request pipeline as clean as all the other middleware that we might use like MVC and uh, HTTPS and so on. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy and hit the subscribe button and the thumbs up button, of course. If you really think that this information might be valuable for others, don't be once again shy and share this video with your peers on your social networks. If you have further questions, feedback or ideas about topics that you want to have discussed here on Developer Ramp Up, hit us with a comment, we'll try to respond and if you propose an interesting topic, then we will cover it soon, as soon as possible. Thank you very much for watching and until the next time, we wish you the very best.